Uh, Daniel, you're from Haiti, and a lot of folks in the developing countries are into subsistence. They're into subsistence farming. They're into subsistence living. And but do you, do you find that even they are aware that there are things happening to the climate, to to their country, to the t uh, terrain? I know Haiti has been cut. The mountains have been denuded basically, the trees have been chopped down, the mahogany trees That's have right. been chopped down, but do you find that they have a feeling too that there's something not quite right that we need to work towards uh, trying to improve the situation? I think uh, depending on whom you're talking about, depending on what uh, uh, group, social group that you're talking about, the level of understanding may vary. Uh, when you take a population of individuals who are just living day by day, looking for survival, the concept of what uh, those uh, use of energy might be doing uh, uh, to the environment may not be as clear. But in general, the information is out there. Those uh, who are alert enough have an opportunity to learn quite a bit about it. Even uh, the fact that you mentioned of uh, the denuded uh, mountain that we have because of a tr tree cutting practice uh, uh, that prevailed for the past few decades in the country. Uh, even those who know that uh, this is the consequences that they are uh, uh, risking, some of them continue to do it because survival is such a priority for many of them that uh, this becomes secondary. The, at CIMAC, we are working on the possibility of importing uh, excess wood from the, from the United States, from the, in particular the state of Delaware. We have uh, a, a partner uh, uh, which is looking at uh, locating excess wood that we can uh, bring to Haiti and uh, with the charcoal plant being able to produce the charcoal that uh, the, the people need for a energy source without having to cut the local trees. Mm -hmm. So the idea is you bring in wood from outside and then that way they don't have to chop the trees down and they have a chance to, the trees can grow on the hillsides and the mountains. And Haiti is a very mountainous country. Mountains, so right. if you cut the trees down, you're gonna have erosion, erosion, tremendous erosion right. problems. Right. Where are you getting your wood? Where is this coming from? And uh, is it a constant supply, or is it, and it's recyclable? Yes, I guess. this has been provided through the work of uh, uh, an American company, uh, a RMS, which uh, is a, a shipping company uh, based in the in Delaware, and uh, we have been able to locate uh, sources of wood that have been uh, somewhat uh, collected and placed on the port and in some, some uh, major sites that we, that we have, we've been able to secure. And uh, uh, the question is being able to uh, transport them to, to Haiti. What we have found is that because the uh, uh, access to the wood is relatively costless, then we can bring that wood in Haiti at cost that is way below what it costs them to cut the tree even. So in that, in that fashion, we are looking for a real opportunity, at least on a temporary basis, to, uh, to help giving relief to the forest over there. And uh, hoping that in the meantime, other alternative sources of energy may emerge to help in a long-term basis. Mm -hmm.